and hopefully they fly. If not, they splatter on the ground like we have them here in our house. A bunch of birds fall out of the nest and just die. Um, I feel like that's the equivalent in the United States. You might have a few that fly out of the nest smoothly, or you have half that fall and splatter and go into crippling debt because they couldn't afford law school. Mm. Hi everyone, what's up? My name is Haley. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If you did not know, now you do. Hey you guys, what's up? So, in today's video y'all, I'm going to be doing a what is socially acceptable in the United States but not in Germany. You guys can let me know if you want me to do the German version of this or what is socially acceptable in Germany but not in the United States. You can let me know in the comment section if you want to see that. Um, if not, that's okay, but we're gonna have some conversations in this video. Some might be funny, some might be more serious, but please understand these are just my opinions, so <laughs> don't think anything I do serious. But I did wanna give a quick shout out to Ana Luisa because they're having a 20% sale right now, you guys, I think until the end of July. So when this video goes up, I think like two or three more days, their sale's still live and it's 20% off their whole shop. But the reason behind this is because so many people ask me where my jewelry is from <laughs> in my comment section. And I would say maybe 90, 95% of all my jewelry comes from Ana Luisa. I've been working with them, um, I wanna say for like three to four years now and I love their jewelry. I wear it in my normal life, everyday life, not just on YouTube. And I've given it as gifts to friends and family members as well and they always like it. So if you guys are ever thinking of asking me where my jewelry is from, it's from Ana Luisa and also they're having a sale. You don't need a code, you just go directly to the website and it'll automatically, I guess, enter in the code when you check out. And yeah, you can use the link down below if you want to. I don't get anything if you click the link. <laughs> But yeah, um, just wanted to let you know, because I know some of y'all are gonna ask me about my cute little earrings today, and hmm, you could say 20% off if you like them. So, let's get right into the video. <sighs> what is socially acceptable? This is going to be so hard, I don't know why I can't speak today. What is socially acceptable in the United States, but not in Germany? Please understand that these are just observations that I have made. But yeah, the first one is going to be the mixture of religion and politics, religion and government in the United States and not in Germany. And for me, it's interesting because in Germany, usually when you're, I guess, applying for a visa, applying for a residency card or doing other things, I only know the immigrant aspect of this. So if you are German, you can let me know as well. But when you're filling out paperwork, you usually have to choose what your religious affiliation is or what denomination you are. So if you're a Christian, you choose Christian or what type of Christian you are. If you're a Muslim, then good for you, all that good stuff. And then that throws you into spe a specific tax bracket, if I'm not mistaken. And like I said, you can step out. Um, you make this choice. I think once you're 18 or something, you can choose to not be affiliated with a religion at a government level in Germany anymore, and you don't have to pay taxes or the fee. Maybe it's not a tax, it's a fee, but I'm pretty sure it's a church tax. Now, the funny thing about this is, is that in the United States, this would be an absolute no-go. But what is okay is like the deep affiliation between politicians and their religious beliefs, which sometimes doesn't really come up in Germany that often. And sometimes in the United States, <laughs> it's like not a gray area. It's like people are either on this spectrum, side of the spectrum, or that side of the spectrum. And it's not everyone. But it's just like people being openly okay about the religion and how it should, I guess, pertain to their political agenda and their campaigning and all that good stuff. And also, I think I've talked about this in many videos on my channels that in the United States, we have a bunch of things that define who we are, whether it be characteristic traits, personality traits. Um, religion is usually one of those things that people use to define or describe themselves. When you ask someone a question in Germany about who they are, what they are, they're most likely not going to answer as a Christian or I'm a Christian. 
In the United States, a lot of times, depending on where you are, someone's gonna say, I'm a white Christian woman from Texas. It's just normal sometimes. And it, the very interesting thing is that when my mom moved into her new house and the neighbor across the street, she came over to meet me. And we were having a nice little conversation, you know, but I think two questions into her meeting me, you know, doing the very typical American small talk, the first thing that she asked me was if I found a church or something along the lines of what my like religious affiliation was and I was like and for me I've been in Germany for so long no one has really asked me about religion when asking about who I am and so it threw me off guard a little because I didn't know how to answer the only reason I've been asked about religion is ger in Germany is regarding tax purposes and so it's just so strange for me I also wanted to point out with this long point is that it's very interesting when you listen to politicians talk about you know the United States and God bless the United States or our God-given rights or whatever they may use to describe stuff and they throw in religion. I do think it's pandering to a base. They know that so many people in the United States, they have a faith and they're very strong in their faith and they use that as a means to identify. And so when someone says, hey, I identify with you, they're more likely to agree with you or vote for you. And so it is what it is, pandering. Hmm. And so the next one, you guys, is going to be a little bit more lighthearted and fun because I feel like the last one was very serious and <laughs> sort of a rant. But it's going to be that in the movie theater when there's like a humongous blockbuster, Harry Potter, any Disney movie, hello, hello, any Disney movie, any Marvel movie for that matter, at the end, if there's a huge crowd in the movie theater, people will usually clap. I feel like people in the United States or people watching this that are from the United States are going to say they don't agree with me. I will look up videos of people clapping at the movie theater because dependent on what movie you watch and if it's like a fan favorite somewhere, you're going to get clapping. But I've also realized that in Germany as well, sometimes when you're flying into certain locations, Mallorca, you know, the 17th Bundesland, people clap when you land the plane or when the plane lands. And in the United States, that's not normal. So I just feel like that's like a flip flop. So you have clapping on the plane with Germans, but you have clapping in the movie theater with people in the United States. I feel like Germans are so reserved when it comes to anything that has to do with art. And I feel like movies, movie theaters, you know, when you're watching something, that's a form of art. And sometimes they're not very excited, like in the United States. Sometimes it's over-exaggerated, but we get excited easily and we're more apt to show our excitement. And I feel like Germans don't do that that much. It's a more toned down version of what we have in the United States. The next one, you guys, which is gonna be a funny one because I think it was Mike, I'm pretty sure it was Mike, but when he came to the United States and he asked for a cup of tea, he was quite shocked to see me grab the, what was it, the cup, fill it up with water, put it in the microwave, turn on the microwave for like 30 minutes. No, not 30 minutes, it'd be scalding hot. <laughs> the, the cup would explode. No, it was like 30 seconds to one minute in the microwave, got the water out, it was like steaming, very hot, put the little tea bag in, called it a day, and he was like, do you not have a kettle? <laughs> And I was like, no, it's just not normal. Maybe it's a Florida thing. I feel like it's a Florida thing because nobody's drinking hot tea <laughs> in Florida. It's too hot. You don't drink hot tea, hot water voluntarily in Florida. But yeah, it's socially acceptable for you to go and heat your water up in the microwave. And I feel like if I did that in Germany, Germans would look at me like I was crazy. I should do that one day. I should like make Mike's friends come over and then ask them if they want tea. And then when they say yes, use a microwave and like make them witness it and then see what they say but we don't have a microwave so it probably won't happen maybe i'll buy a microwave i don't know probably not either the next point is going to be something that i've talked about in a few videos before but it is moving out when you start college or even when you turn 18. I've talked about like just moving out in general in Germany and how sometimes people stay a little bit longer with their families, whether it be to help out, to save money, I have no idea what the reasoning may be. There's a bunch of reasons. But in the United States, there's sort of like this, I don't know, this push to leave when you're 18 or when you start college or when you get a job, like your first job. It's always like this stress and this pressure 
to start life. And I feel like in Germany, people are so relaxed and chill. And also because there's one thing with the college culture, I've met people that are in their 30s, 40s, still in school in Germany. Maybe they're <laughs> using the system, maybe they're taking their time, but it's also just that they don't have to stress about it because they don't have to pay a lot of money for it. So I feel like in the United States, a lot of times it's like, fast forwarded because it's so expensive maybe and also i feel like there's just this idea of what a family picture is and it's not the same as in germany you know family is your family takes care of you they provide you with a roof over your head and then when you get to be 18 which is adult age it's like you need to leave the nest it's like birds you know as soon as a bird is ready the parents just kick them out and hopefully they fly if not they splatter on the ground like we have them here in our house a bunch of birds fall out of the nest and just die um, I feel like that's the equivalent in the United States you might have a few that fly out of the nest smoothly or you have half that fall and splatter and go into crippling debt because they couldn't afford law school Mm. Yeah, it's just something that is more socially acceptable when you're 18 and you're figuring out what school to go to and then you just go to the school and you go to a dorm, you live with someone else <laughs> in this tiny room and that doesn't really happen in Germany. I mean, do you guys have dorms here? I feel like I've been to dorms, like I've been to college housing and homes, but it's like little tiny rooms that people live in by themselves, but I've never seen a dorm like in the United States where it's like two bunk beds or like two sets of bunk beds and then there's four girls sharing a room and then sharing a bathroom with 20 people on that floor. I've never seen something like that here. The next one is going to be a fun one, <laughs> but it's also very weird for me now and it is greeters in the store. Hmm. So it is socially acceptable in the United States to have a job that is specifically for greeting people, customers, future customers, because they haven't purchased anything yet, but they're thinking of walking into the store and buying something and you're standing there awkwardly telling them, there's a 20% off sale if you buy five of the same items and it's an additional 30% off their clearance section. And if you sign up for our credit card today, you can save 50% on your whole purchase. I used to work in retail, you guys, and I hated being a greeter. We would pick straws or we'd flip coins to see who had to be a greeter that day because everyone hated it. So to let you guys know, people in the United States that work in retail hate being greeters just as much as you hate the greeters, but it's like forced upon us. But I've noticed now in a lot of stores that I've been to in Germany, it could be because of COVID that there are more greeters here. And it's interesting for me because the observations that I have made is that German society does not push for greeters. In the sense, let me try to explain. So in the United States, we have this fundamental idea that the customer is king, the customer is always correct, um, customer service is like the number one thing. Sometimes good, but it can sometimes be overwhelming, especially for the people that work in customer service. So people like to have the floor washed before their feet. They like to be, you know, having someone up their ass 24 seven, and they just feel like it's a good shopping experience if they have this. What I've observed in Germany, if I need help, I'll call you. I'll wave my hand, I'll come up to you, I'll ask you a question, but I don't want you to invade my personal space. But it's very interesting to me because like I said, it shows very fundamental core differences between the United States and Germany regarding customer service and what is acceptable, what is not acceptable, not even what is acceptable, what is preferred and not preferred. And I feel like in Germany, Germans are not that easily persuaded as we are in the United States by capitalism. That could be like the end point for it all. So the next point you guys is going to be another controversial one and I hope I don't offend anyone with this point but it has been something I've observed over the years between the United States and Germany and like differences and it's going to be that it's socially acceptable to have a flex culture in the United States. If you don't know what flex culture is or what flexing means, I'm gonna get the Urban Dictionary definition out for you guys because it's slang in the United States but it's this culture of bragging and showing off, which I have a lot of nerve because I share a lot of aspects of my life, um, but I hope it doesn't come off as bragging or showing off. It's just something that I have a passion of doing. I enjoy doing, I love sharing, you know, on YouTube, but there comes like this fine line between bragging and sharing. 
like sharing because you really enjoy what you're doing, you love what you're doing, and bragging because you want people to know that you have money. Now, I live in Munich, <laughs> and it is pretty <sighs> bragging here. People like to show off their wealth, or people that have no money like to show off like they have money. So that's a whole different story, but I feel like as a whole, most of the Germans that I have met are relatively private. They don't like to share that much. They don't like to be victims of capitalism, consumerism, and even show that they are. And that's like the complete opposite of the United States. People will say, oh my gosh, I went to Target and I spent $500. And then I think to myself, why are you sharing this on Facebook? <laughs> what is the literal point of this? Or hey, I just bought my new car. And it's like, of course these things, you know, are nice to share and you should share if you really want to but if you're only doing it to justify i guess your social standing in life with other people that's where it becomes murky sketchy shady that's just my opinion though i think it has also a lot to do with privacy in germany people don't like when other people know that much about them and that's something that i've learned over the years is to not share my entire life on the internet which is hard because i have a youtube channel sharing my whole life but there are so many things that i keep private in my life that i just don't want people to know but i feel like if i was in the united states i would be sharing all of it with everyone. I also feel like consumerism itself in the United States, like I said, is a tool to show what societal party or pool you can fit in. If I can afford this and I can show off that I can purchase it, then I can make friends in this social circle. This happens all over the world, but I feel like more so in the United States. And I notice it when I'm with my friends sometimes in the United States, or not even friends, just like acquaintances or people that I just randomly meet. It's like this awkward phase of wanting to show off to see if like I'll show off with them or if I'll be at the same level with them. And most of the time I do not not meet people at their same level because I always think it's a waste of money. I always think trying to impress people with money will never get you anywhere. I mean, sometimes it will, but for the most part, usually when people are impressed with me or with like things that I do, it has nothing to do with money. It has to do with the stories that I tell or the things that I say, not necessarily what comes out of my pocketbook. So yeah, I feel like that's it though. I, I think I might make a part two because there's a few in here that I didn't talk about. I'm just scared that this video will be way too long. So yeah, <laughs> with all that being said, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Please, if you wanna check out Anna Louisa, you guys, get 20% off their site-wide sale for July. Um, I will list the link down below. Other than that, I'm going, I'm sweating, it's hot. Thank you so much for watching and bye.